Now we come to the bones of the skull and starting from rostral to caudal, we start with the incisive bone. Uh, this is the incisive bone. This is the left and this is the right. This is the nasal bone. This is the frontal bone. This is the maxilla or the maxillary bone. Let me go to the side. Okay. This is green. This is the maxilla or the maxillary. And in the maxillary bone, you see this infraorbital framing, which is one of the structure that you can palpate in the live animal. Okay. This is here is the lacrimal bone and the area you see here that is the lacrimal fossa where the lacrimal gland sits over there. Okay. This is still the red is an extension of the frontal bone. Okay. Now the blue here, this is the palatine bone, and this is the sphenoid complex or the sphenoid bone. This green on the most caudal aspect here, this is the, the temporal bone. Okay, now if you go here, okay. this is the parietal bone, the most caudal one here, this is the occipital bone with the occipital condyles that articulate with the first cervical vertebra, that is the atlas, to form the atlanto-occipital joint. The big foramen that you see here, this is the foramen magnum, and this is for the passing of the spinal cord from the brain to run through the vertebral canal, okay? On the side, the bone that you see here, this is the zygomatic bone, okay? And this part here of the zygomatic bone, this is the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. This is here is the frontal bone, and this is the zygomatic process of the, the frontal bone. Now, let us go and look at some of the foramina that we can see in the skull. At the level of the maxilla or the maxillary bone, this huge frame in here, this is the infraorbital frame. And the infraorbital nerve comes out through this frame. In. This frame, in, you can palpate it in the live animal. The infraorbital nerve will come out with the artery and vein. You can palpate this bundle here, and you can utilize this when you come to do infraorbital nerve block, to block the infraorbital nerve. It is sensory to the skin on the lateral aspect of the nose and to the upper lip. So if you have a minor procedure, like a cut, you want a suture at the upper lip or on the lateral skin of the nose, you don't need to do um, general anesthesia, you need to do local anesthesia by blocking the infraorbital nerve once it is coming out of the infraorbital frame. Okay? The infraorbital framing leads to the infraorbital canal. Okay? Now, the caudal opening of the canal is from the inner side and that is the maxillary framing. Okay, this is the maxillary foramen, leads to the infraorbital foramen that enters rostrally through the infraorbital foramen. And this is for the infraorbital nerve, which is a branch of the maxillary. And the maxillary is one of the three major branches of the trigeminal nerve, which is the cranial nerve number five. Now, as the level of the sphenoid bone, there are three or four foramen. The most rostral one, this is the optic canal. And this is for the optic nerve. The second one, 
<coughs> is the orbital fissure. And the orbital fissure is for <coughs> the oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve number three, the trochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number four, and the ophthalmic branch of cranial nerve number five, which is the trigeminal, and the abducent nerve, which is the cranial nerve number six. So the orbital fissure is for three, four, ophthalmic branch of five and, and six. Now, codal to the orbital fissure, this is the rostral alar foramen, and the one on the caudal aspect here, that is the caudal alar foramen. And the space in between the two is the alar canal. Now, from the inside of the skull, the round foramen open into this canal, into this alar canal. The maxillary nerve come out through the round foramen runs through the alar canal to come out through the rostral alar foramen. Just codu dorsal to the caudal alar foramen, this is the oval foramen, and this is for the mandibular nerve, which is the other branch of the trigeminal, which is cranial nerve number five. So we have the oval foramen for the mandibular, we have the caudal and rostral alar foramen for the maxillary. Bear in mind, the maxillary will come out through the round foramen that opens into the middle of this alar canal. Then we have the orbital fissure for three, four of salmic branch of five and six. And we have the most rostral one, which is the optic canal and that is for the optic nerve. Okay. Now, if we come and look, um, there is a couple of um, foramen here. Those are the sphenopalatine foramen and caudal to that, and the one on the caudal aspect is the caudal palatine foramen. This is small foramen, foramina, that are sitting close to each other. The most rostral one is the sphenopalatine foramen, and that is for the sphenopalatine artery and vein, and for the caudal nasal nerve to enter the nasal cavity, they run through this sphenopalatine. And the caudal one is the caudal palatine foramen, and this is for the caudal palatine artery and vein and nerve, they will pass through this to go to the, to the heart palate. So these two are the sphenopalatine foramen and the caudal palatine foramen. There is a, a small and tiny foramen at, up here, and the, these are the uh, ethmoidal foramen, and that's for the ethmoidal artery and, and veins. Now, when we come here on the caudal, on the caudal aspect, this is the occipital bone, and this is the parietal. As the dorsal aspect of the interparietal bone, this is the sagittal crest. And the sagittal crest is one of the structures that you can feel and palpate in the live animal, not in all breeds, for sure, okay? But in, in some breeds, it's one of the palpable structure. And this crest here, okay, between the occipital bone and the parietal, this is the nuchal crest, and also it is palpable in, in some breeds of dog. Now, this occipital bone, it has many features, okay? We said these are the occipital condyles, okay? These are the pericondylar processes, and this structure here is the tympanic bulla, okay? And the tympanic bulla will give you access to the middle ear. So, tympanic osteotomy, when you make a cut through this tympanic bulla will give you access to the middle, middle ear, bear that in mind. 
Now, let us look at the foramina of the occipital and, and the temporal bone and in between the two. Okay? Now, in between the tympanic bulla and the occipital bone, this is the tympano-occipital fissure. And the tympano-occipital fissure, cranial nerve number 9, 10, and 11, come out through here. These are the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, and the accessory. All of them come out through the tympano-occipital fissure. This one here, a small one, just coded to the tympano-occipital fissure. This is the hypoglossal foramen or the hypoglossal canal. And this is for cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve, will come out through this hypoglossal foramen. Okay? If we go to the lateral aspect here, on the temporal bone. Okay. This is the external acoustic meatus, or this is the external opening of the ear canal. Okay. Just in between the baracondylar, uh, baracondylar process and the external acoustic meatus Okay. The foramen that is here, that is the stylomastoid foramen. And the stylomastoid foramen, this is for the facial nerve, which is facial, which is cranial nerve number seven. Okay, so now we have the facial nerve is coming out through the stylomastoid foramen, which is this one. Okay, here we have the hypoglossal foramen for the hypoglossal nerve. Here we have the tympano occipital fissure for 9, 10, and 11. Okay. Here we have the oval foramen for the mandibular. We have the caudal and the rostral alar foramen for the maxillary. We have the orbital fissure for 3, 4, ophthalmic branch of 5, and abducens, which is 6. And we have the optic canal for the optic nerve. Okay. Now, when we come to the bones here, this is the occipital bone. Okay. This is the presphenoid bone. Okay. These are the trigoid bone. This is the trigoid bone. Okay. This is the basis phenoid bone. Okay. Let me put it on the side so you can see it better. This is the trigoid bone. Okay. It, is not, it is not big. The trigoidius muscle is attached to this bone. The trigoidius muscle is one of the muscles of mastication, and it is one of the muscles that closes the jaw. Okay. The muscle that's sitting on the lateral aspect of the trigoid bone, that is the lateral trigoidius muscle, and the one that's sitting on the medial aspect, that is the medial trigoidius muscle. So they sit around the trigoid, trigoid bone. Okay? So we have the occipital bone, we have the basis phenoid bone, we have the presphenoid bone, which is this white here. The blue one is still, it is the palatine. And down here, this is the vomer bone. And the vomer is where the nasal septum sits. Okay, so the nasal septum is start from the vomer bone, which is this bone here. So this is here is the vomer. Okay, this is the presphenoid. Okay, and this is the basi uh, sphenoid bone. Thank you. Now, um, another feature uh, of the canine skull uh, is the orbit. And the orbit uh, receive uh, the eyeball, okay? And the orbit consists of, uh, or um, 
a number of bones participate in formation of the orbit. It is the zygomatic bone, the maxilla, and the frontal. Uh, if you observe that on the codolateral aspect, okay, the orbit is not complete. Okay, it's open here. You see, there is a gap here. And in life animal, uh, this gap uh, is crossed or is filled with the orbital ligament. This orientation is not fixed in all species. In some species, you will see that they have a complete, complete orbit. But in the dog, the orbit is not complete and the gap is filled with the orbital ligament, which extends from the zygomatic process of the frontal bone to the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. The ligament will run in between these two to fill the gap and to complete the circular area for the orbit. Okay, so bear in mind, the orbit is not complete and the gap is filled in the life animal with the orbital ligament. While you are doing your dissection, you may try to find that it runs from the zygomatic process of the frontal bone to the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. Okay. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that needs to be mentioned. Uh, another area here, um, if you want to see the round ligament or the round foramen, I mean, okay, this is the round foramen from inside the skull. That is the foramen that opens in the alar canal in between the caudal and the rostral alar foramen. This is the round uh, foramen for the maxillary nerve. Now we come to the mandible. Uh, this is the lateral side of the mandible and it is the lateral side because you can see the masseteric fossa for the masseter muscle will sit here. This is the ramus of the mandible. Okay. This is the neck. Okay. And this is the head. Okay. This is the condylar process. This is the chronoid, chronoid process. And this is the angular process. And the angular process uh, is one of the palpable structure in the live animal. So we have the ramus of the mandible. And here, this is the body of the mandible. So the mandible consists of two parts, the body and the ramus. The ramus consists of the crinoid process and the condylar process. Okay, And here, this is the angular process. This is the masseter fossa. That's why this is the lateral side. The masseter fossa receive the ma masseter muscle sitting on this fossa here. Okay. Another structure you can utilize to differentiate between lateral and medial is the mental foramina. And this foramen is palpable in the live animal and also, it is the foramen where the mental nerve, the branch of the inferior alveolar, will come out to provide sensory innervation to the lower lip. Uh, so this is the mental foramen. When we go to the medial side of the mandible, okay, uh, a very important structure to pay attention to is the mandibular foramen. Okay, where the mandibular nerve, which is one of the branches of the trigeminal, goes through the mandibular foramen, and inside there, at this level, it gives the inferior alveolar nerve that run through the mandibular canal. When it reaches the level of the mental foramen, Okay, it will send the mental nerve, which is a branch of the inferior alveolar that come out through the mental foramen and go to the lower lips, while the inferior alveolar will continue to go to innervate 
the incisors and the canine teeth. And we said, if you want to do a minor procedure at the lower lip, you block the mental nerve as soon as it comes out of the mental foramen. At this level here, you can palpate the mental foramen and you can palpate the mental nerve. Uh, you can see here there are two foramina. Sometimes you may see three of them, and all those are for the mental nerve. Now, if you want to work with the incisors and the canines, uh, if you want to do extraction, and um, you want to block the inferior alveolar, you need to insert your needle inside the mandibular canal through the mental foramina, you insert your needle there and you dispense your anesthetic agent that would desensitize the inferior alveolar that go to the canines and the incisors, incisors teeth. Also on the medial side, you can block the mandibular nerve at the level of the mandibular foramen. Okay. Uh, you can do this nerve block from the inside of the oral cavity, you can block the mandibular nerve at this area here. Thank you.